book of Daniel chapter 10 from verse 12 to 14, we read of how Daniel went in prayer to seek the Lord for understanding. And yet the answer was delayed and the angel of the Lord tells him that the reason the, the answer was delayed was because of a demonic spirit, a demonic principality that was fighting against Daniel's prayers by resisting the angel of the Lord. So this is just an example that can prove to us that there is spiritual warfare when we pray. Have you ever wondered why it's so easy, like you can spend countless hours and even sleep very late just scrolling on your phone, you know, just browsing the internet or just watching videos, you know, and people who watch movies, you know, like they can watch movies for hours on end. But when we come now to our spiritual lives, you're going to find that the very person who is able to spend all these hours, you know, like scrolling, you even sleep late. But once you say, let me go into the closet and pray, you know, you're going to find that now it seems like it's a very difficult thing. Like even just spending 20 minutes in prayer feels like it's been two hours. Like spending 30 minutes in prayer feels like it's been a long time. Spending an hour in prayer, like it seems like it's such a hard thing. But when you just go to your phone and you check like how many hours have I spent on my phone, you know, you would actually be shocked. Like it's a lot of hours, but you just feel like it's just been a few minutes. That's because of the spiritual warfare that is taking place in the spiritual realm in order to stop us from praying. So we need to realize that Satan is trying to stop every person from praying, regardless of whether you are right now on fire for the Lord, you are, your prayer life is on fire like you actually pray, or whether your prayer life is completely dead, or no matter where you are, in your journey with Jesus, Satan is still fighting against your prayer life. So that is why you feel that resistance when it comes to prayer. And that is why uh, non-spiritual things, they seem so much easy to do, like you don't need any effort. Jesus Christ himself encourages us so much in his word to pray. And why does Jesus see prayer as important for his disciples? In Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, Jesus Christ tells us the importance of prayer. He says, watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. When we pray, that is the time that the life of God is imparted in our lives and we're able to actually bear fruits of righteousness. And this is also a, a major reason why Satan fights our prayers. It's so that we may not have the strength to overcome sin. Yes, prayer has different results. Prayer has physical provision. Prayer has, you know, opens, opens different kinds of doors of breakthrough that we need in our lives. And you know, the devil not only fights our, us from receiving in the spirit, but also in the physical. He doesn't want us to have that breakthrough. That is why he fights our prayers. He doesn't want us to have even the spiritual breakthrough against sin. And that is why he fights our prayers. But Jesus says, watch and pray so that you don't fall into temptation. When Jesus Christ was born here on the earth, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ was man. You know, he came as a man here on the earth. He felt all the temptation that a man is able to feel. And yet he was without sin until his death. He was able to overcome. So jesus christ through his life he shows us the pattern of overcoming and it is through prayer in luke chapter 6 verse 12 we read of jesus christ spending the entire night in prayer in mark chapter 1 verse 37 again we read of jesus christ rising up while it's still dark very early in the morning before it was even dawn and jesus christ rose up early in the morning to go and spend time in prayer so we see Jesus putting this emphasis on prayer. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, we read of how Jesus 
went with his disciples in the garden of Gethsemane and Jesus asked his disciples to pray and Jesus himself withdrew in prayer alone. Jesus didn't just pray once, he went back three times to pray the same prayer. That just shows us how important prayer is to us. You know, no wonder our savior could go back and do it like three times because even though he didn't see the answer the first time, he still believed he needed to pray and ask for the Father's will the second time and the third time. And you know, we actually see Jesus emphasizing this fact to us in Luke chapter 18 from verse 1 to 8, where Jesus Christ tells us the story of the persistent widow. The Lord Jesus Christ says that men should always pray and not lose heart. Men should always pray and not give up. That is what the Lord God says. He says, don't give up, keep praying. Then he tells the story of a widow who kept asking a favor from a judge and this judge wouldn't give it to her. And finally he had to give her just because she wasn't giving up. So Jesus Christ shows us that not only should we pray, but we should be persistent in it, even when we don't see results. The same way that our Lord was persistent, he went back praying the same prayer three times. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41, again, we read the story of a servant of the Lord, Elijah the prophet, how he went to pray for rain. And the Bible tells us that Elijah had to go and keep praying the same prayer. He, he prayed it seven times. He prayed and it didn't happen. He went back and prayed and it didn't happen until the seventh time. And then his prayer was answered. And the Lord gives us these examples so that we know that our prayers are not wasted, even when it seems like it's not working. The Lord says that don't give up, go back into your prayer closet and pray again until you receive. Because the Lord Jesus Christ said, everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks finds. So the Lord keeps on encouraging us to pray and to keep praying and even demonstrated it. And even in the lives of his servants, we see the same persistence in prayer, which shows us just how powerful our prayers are in the spiritual realm. And when we come to James chapter 5, verse 17, we actually see that the, the Bible actually gives the example of Elijah's persistence as an example that we're supposed to copy. The Bible says that Elijah was a man like us. He was human with flesh and blood, just like you and I. He wasn't a spirit being. Yet he prayed earnestly to the Lord until the Lord brought the rain and the drought ended. So the Bible is encouraging us that our prayer works. Look at what other human beings have done. Like they persisted in the prayer and the Lord God finally answered. So we see this exhortation, you know, from the Bible that shows us that our prayers are not in vain. The Bible says that the prayer of a righteous man avails much. The prayer of children of God, it means a lot in the spiritual realm. And no wonder the enemy resists it. When we come to Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven, again, the Bible exhorts us to pray and says, worry about nothing, pray about everything. In Acts chapter 12, verse seven, we see how Peter was a prisoner. You know, he was arrested and put in prison. Yet when the saints beseeched the Lord in prayer, the angel of the Lord was sent to go and release Peter from his chains. So we have seen numerous accounts of how powerful prayer is. And the Lord himself demonstrated it and actually instructed that don't give up. Men should always pray and not lose heart. So we see that the Lord over and over exhorts us to pray and we see over and over the numerous amazing results of prayer. But we also see in scripture, like the example of Daniel, that the enemy resists prayer. And we have seen that the reason the enemy resists the prayer is because he wants to block the breakthrough that is going to come through our prayer. He wants to, break, to block the breakthrough and the strength that we're going to receive, you know, when we pray, we're going to have the strength to overcome. 
So we need to be aware of the spiritual warfare that is happening in the spiritual realm. The devil's biggest lie, you know, his biggest wish is for people to not notice uh, his tactics and what he does. You know, for people to just say, oh, this is just normal. You know, this cannot be a demonic activity. This is just normal. That is what he wants. Because, you know, even the Bible says my people perish because of lack of knowledge. When you are not aware that this is something the enemy is doing, you cannot resist him. But the Bible says that resist the devil and he is going to flee. You submit yourself to God, you resist the devil and he will flee. So the reason why it is so difficult to pray, the reason why people find it so hard to pray, it's because of the spiritual realm that is taking place the very moment, even before you kneel down to pray. There is spiritual warfare. And you know, I have been so blessed because the Lord has opened my spiritual eyes to see the spiritual warfare that takes place in the spiritual realm regarding our prayers in order to stop us from praying. How Satan blocks our prayers even before you pray. You know, he will never come to you and say, you know, so uh, maybe call out your name and say, from this day on, don't ever pray. No. But, you know, the devil comes to us in a subtle way. So he is going to come and say, no, uh, you, you, you will pray. You know, you will pray in the next hour or two. You know, you're going to pray. Just do this little thing first. You know, it's just a small thing. You're going to be done very soon. And you will not realize those are actually demons that are talking to you. But if the Lord could open your spiritual eyes, you could actually see that you are actually already in spiritual warfare. Many people cannot pray. Many people cannot fast. Not because they, they don't want to, you know, but because of the spiritual warfare. The devil doesn't come and, and tell you that, you know, never ever do prayer and fasting. No, he will just come and tell you that, oh no, to, you know, today, today is so hot. Uh, you know, you're going to get thirsty, you're going to get hungry, you know, just go and get uh, eat. I think tomorrow will be a better day, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, you're going to do it tomorrow. And you know what, tomorrow you are, you're going to make sure that, you know, you wake up very early in the morning and you go and pray. But then when the next day comes, the devil will come with the same lie. The devil will come with the same lie. Many of you, brothers and sisters, you have experienced all these things. And sometimes people don't realize this is spiritual warfare. Even before you go on your knees, there's spiritual warfare to block you from praying because the devil wants you to fall in temptation. So the devil is not going, you know, while you are prayerful, the devil is not just going to come and present temptation to you because he knows that you will resist him. You have the spiritual strength. So he has to, you know, he has to have a strategy. He has to kill the source of that life first. Because once he kills your prayer life, he knows he has you. Now it's very easy for you to backslide. Now it's very easy for you to start questioning even the things that the Lord God has already told you about. So we must resist the devil. Let us take our prayers very seriously. The Lord took his prayers very seriously. He took his prayers seriously. No wonder he could wake up early in the morning while everyone else is asleep. And he goes to pray. No wonder he could stay up the entire night. Everyone else is so comfortable in their bed. But our Lord is there on his knees praying to the Father. It shows us the seriousness with which the Lord was taking his prayers. And when you cannot see in the spirit all those things that the demons are doing, they're just going to manifest as a feeling, you know. You just start feeling like, ah, you know, I think let me just pray tomorrow. You know, uh, I think I'm running out of time. There are demons that are fighting you, you know, whispering all those things. There is a demonic spirit uh, that is released to come and fight you as soon as you begin to pray. You know, they're going to start making you busy. Firstly, even before you go on your knees, you know, 
while you're busy with the things of the world, you know, browsing for hours, they will just leave you alone, you know, and even whisper to you, you know, why don't you check out this other thing? But as soon as you say, let me go and pray, then demons are going to come and whisper to you, you know, uh, why don't you just look up this thing? Uh, you know what? Yeah, I think you should go and pray. Yeah, I agree with, with your thoughts. Yeah, go and pray. It's a very good thing. You need to go and pray. But look up this. Oh, la, check up on this person. You know, things that you were not doing before. It was your prayer time. There are demons that are resisting your prayers. The same way that Daniel's prayers were resisted. You know, because the enemy uses different strategies. His first strategy is to even stop you from praying. When you finally uh, manage to defeat him on that level and you actually allocate the time and you actually go on your knees to pray, as soon as you begin to pray, he again resists you. He starts to tell you, uh, you know, maybe you pray a little bit later. You know, or if you resist him again and you, you begin to pray, now his strategy is to make you absent-minded so that you only pray with your words because the prayer that is heard by the Lord is the prayer that is from the heart. So he wants you, you know, like you are here praying, but you're busy thinking about all the things that you were doing yesterday. You're thinking about the things you are doing today. You're thinking about what you're going to do tomorrow. Uh, his, the demons start to remind you, you know, there are demons that are whispering those things. They start to whisper, you know, all your problems. They start to whisper to you, do you think you'll ever get the answer for this? They start to whisper to you, you know, do you, uh, do you remember what this person did to you? You know, what are you going to do about this? So the devil comes with distractions because he wants your prayers to be wasted. This is the reason why, you know, you can spend hours browsing. But as soon as you get down on your knees to pray, suddenly you are dozing. It's not that prayer is boring. It's because you are being fought against by demonic spirits. And the Lord has opened my eyes so many times to see these demonic spirits and all the things that they do in the spiritual realm. And they are real. I remember the time when the Lord had instructed my sister and I, that was 2012. Uh, on 17th September 2012, the Lord wanted to give us a revelation of heaven and hell. And the Lord had actually given an instruction for me and my sister uh, and our family and a few people from church to have these prayers and in order for the Lord to, to give us the revelation. So we were at home praying at the instruction of the Lord. And when we were praying, you know, Satan sent those demons to come and you know, to, to try to ruin our prayers. And the Lord God opened our spiritual eyes. I remember the Lord, uh, I remember the Lord showed me a demon. And then, you know, I saw, I suddenly saw a vision of this demonic spirit. It, it was like on this place, like a beach. And then the demon looked like a snail. And then it had these protruding eyes, you know, and it was watching us. So I saw this demon and I didn't say anything, you know, and I was still praying. But then just minutes later, to show you how real these things are, my sister Zipporah, you know, she like we were praying. And then my sister Zipporah, you know, she, 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 she suddenly said, you know, like the Lord showed her the same demon and she said it. I saw it. I didn't say it. But the Lord wanted to prove like, look, this is real. And my sister was like, look, there's this demon that is on the beach. Look, look, it's watching you. It wants to listen into your prayers so that it, it causes distraction. And she actually described the very demon like it looks like a snail. The very demon that Jesus had shown me. This, this shows you that this is real. Those thoughts that you start having as soon as you pray, they are not from your mind. They are demons that are whispering to you and telling you, you know, just go and pray tomorrow. Pray tomorrow. And the next day again, he'll say, pray tomorrow. The next day again, he'll say, no, just fast tomorrow. Next day, he'll say, you know what? Uh, just start next month on the 1st. It will be a good start for the month of November. But when we get to November, again, the same demon will come back and it will whisper to you, you know, we're almost in 2025. So just start in 2025, you know, yeah. 
yeah, it will be a new beginning, you know, 2025. And when you get there again, it will whisper to you pro, uh, through procrastination. Because it's spiritual warfare, the enemy is just trying to buy time, you know, because he knows that for all this time that your prayer life is weak, he can get you as deep as possible into sin. He can start dragging you into mere hypocrisy. He can start dragging you back into the things you vomited, the things Jesus delivered you from. So the Bible tells us to resist the devil. We must know that Satan fights our prayers. And when we know that this is a battle I'm being fought, these are not just my imaginations, these are not just my thoughts, then we're going to be able to resist the enemy. And when he comes and says, you know, pray tomorrow, you're going to resist him and to pray. And when you resist the devil, you know, your prayers are going to be powerful and you're going to get the answer. Your prayers are going to, to be able to penetrate through the spiritual realm, you know, and overcome all the demons that come against you. You're praying with an earnest heart. Just like Elijah prayed, just like our Lord prayed, just like our Lord instructed us to pray, and just like Daniel prayed. He prayed for 21 days. Even when the answer was not coming, he kept on, and finally the answer came. And that is when the Lord made him know that there was resistance against his prayers. So Satan doesn't want us to pray. Because when we pray, we will resist temptation. So we have to take care of our prayer lives. We have to deliberately cut out the idols that are taking up the time that is supposed to be given to the Lord. The, the Bible says that you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. So the reason why many people have been seeking Jesus, and, but they're unable to, to get a breakthrough, you know, they're unable to get a breakthrough to find the Lord to be connected to the heart of God and to be filled with the Spirit of God and to start walking by the Spirit. It's because of these same demons that keep fighting your prayers so that, yes, even when you finally manage to pray, it's half-hearted. Like you're saying one thing, your heart, your mind is full of different thoughts. But we must resist the enemy. We must come and pray with a humble heart and resist the devil and Jesus Christ is going to help us and we're going to be able to pray. So we must know that prayer is warfare. And when we approach prayer as warfare, we're not going to be lazy because we're going to know, you know, this thought that pray, uh, pray after an hour, this thought that's coming and saying, you know, check your phone once more. You know, this thing whereby like as soon as you want to pray, somebody calls you, you know, just on the very day when you say, today I'm in prayer and fasting, I'm going to put my phone away. Then suddenly a friend of yours calls you and you end up spending like an hour, two hours on the phone. You're going to know that is Satan who has just inspired your friend to call you in order to distract you. You're going to know all these things are not coincidence. So we are not warring against flesh and blood, but against demons, against principalities, you know, who really, really want to stay in the background because that way they're going to work. They really don't want you to realize that this is demonic activity. Because, because if you think, oh, these are just my thoughts, you're just going to keep saying, you know, what's wrong with me? Why is it that every time I want to pray, you know, I, I get lazy, yet I'm able to spend all these hours on the internet? You will not know what's happening. But the Bible says that, you know, watch and pray so that you don't fall into temptation. So we must know that when we resist the devil, that is the only way that we can keep our prayer life on fire. And that is the only way we're going to keep from backsliding.